Hello knitters! Rachel here, Treehouse Knits, episode 42. How are you guys all doing? It has been a couple of weeks since we last chatted. Have you been working on some fun fibery things or are you like the majority of knitters and kind of feeling a little bit not so much as into knitting as you are in the winter? Whenever spring comes I tend to start to not be really interested in picking up my knitting and uh, at first I would get frustrated about it, but it always comes back, that urge to knit. So be, be uh, gentle with yourself and know your knitting urges will return for sure. That doesn't mean I haven't done on any other, that doesn't mean I haven't knit or have a lot to show with show you today. Uh, I do have some finished objects. I have some works in progress. I want to share with you the new Cal that will be starting up in a, in less than a couple of weeks that I hope you join in on. And uh, I also just have a bunch of random things that are going on, things that are related to the fiber world that I think you might be interested in, you know, that kind of thing. So why don't we jump in and get started? Spring has sprung here on the west side of Michigan. My plants are all coming up. The sun has not been shining. We've been getting a lot of rain, which has been great for the plants, but um, everything that we planted last year that was new in the ground is really coming up well and we couldn't be happier. We're trying to get the pool open right now and that's been a little bit of a learning curve this year, but we're getting there and I can't wait to get the pool up and going and maybe this weekend we'll be able to take our first swim of the season. So that will be really cool. So last time we had a giveaway. I was giving away last month's Knit Crate box, which has these two gorgeous skeins of Knit Crate's Audine Wool's Psy, as in ah, Psy DK, and that is what you do when you feel the squishy goodness. It's taking all my willpower to follow through with this giveaway. I would love to keep these skeins, but Seeing as I have, this is a, um, also a knit crate from last year, I have something similar already in this color, so I am actually happy to share the love. I did a random picker on YouTube. It takes all the comments and does a random um, selection on them. We had 56 comments, and I'll show you who won here. So congratulations, Kimberly. Hey, if I see you next weekend at the Plucky Pop-Up, maybe I can bring it with? Let me know. All right, so thanks for letting us know uh, a little bit more about what you would take if you had a fire, what knitting things you would retrieve. It was a very interesting and telling uh, comment section about what's important to us. And it was just really fun to hear some of the amazing things you guys have created. Some of, a lot of it was not even knitting, it was other fiber arts. So take a peek if you're interested in seeing what other people who watch this podcast are doing and are really proud of. Okay, so let's jump right in. Hmm, okay, let's talk about finished objects. I have, I am so excited about this finished object. The, I shared with you Rennie's mittens. I think I shared them, yeah, I shared them on the last episode of the podcast. I still kept the pom-pom on this one. For some reason, I just think, oh, it's kind of cute. Leave it on there. Um, but since then, I spoke with, well, since then, the pattern has been published. And you can find it on Ravelry. I wanted to give you guys, the people who watch my Treehouse Knits podcast regularly, a little discount. So if you purchase Rennie's Mitts on Ravelry and you use the coupon code subscriber, that will get you 20% off the $4.99 um, price for the pattern. So since I put Rennie's Mitts up, I talked to Wool and Honey. They are the... Um, kind of what I consider my local yarn store, even though they're like two hours away from me. And I thought these mittens would be perfect because they are located right in the heart of cherry orchard country. And in fact, these mittens I actually created, um, I was inspired by a cherry orchard that 
my family and I would pick cherries from occasionally and buy from their roadside stand and eat on the boat on the summers floating on the local on Elk Lake and so I contacted them and they wanted me to knit up a pair using stone wool cormo. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw me over the weekend knitting these very quickly. You know what, they're worsted weight, so they really do knit up pretty quickly. And here is the finished, that's actually a piece of hay from the mittens, from the yarn. This cormo is incredible and I love how these knit up the cluster stitches, that's what these are in here, that kind of resemble a bowl of, of cherries. The coloring of the yarn is really that black cherry color. I love the green and that gray background. The, the red and the, the gray really pop, or that natural color. These turned out so well. And these are gonna be headed up to Wool and Honey. I'm gonna send them off today. I wanted to share with uh, share these with you today on the podcast, but here they are. I did them in a weekend. I tell you, it they go really fast because they're worsted weight. I think this would be a great pattern for any of you who may be, perhaps have never done color work mittens before because you just do a little bit of color work. You learn the Latvian braid. I think my instructions are really clear on the Latvian braid. And then this cluster stitch. My testers had never done the cluster stitch. It's really fun, a lot easier than it looks. Um, and then just finishing up with a tiny bit of really easy color work here. This would be a great pattern for someone who really wanted to try some color work mittens. And in that vein, um, we are going to be, well, myself and Denise are hosting again this summer, the Summer Mitten Cal. We did it last year, we had a lot of you participate, and we're gonna do it again this year. So if you knit up a pair of Rennie's mitts in the Summer Knit, uh, mitten, knit Along, the Summer Mitten Cal, um, I will enter you in twice on my Ravelry um, page where the, um, where the finished objects thread is. If you're considering knitting up, joining in on that summer mitten cal this year, but you've never done color work, this might be a really good option for you. Again, it's worsted weight. So Rennie's mitts. I think what I'm gonna plan on doing for the summer mitten cal is actually do a couple of really quick tutorials on the, la I'll show the Latvia braid, I'll show um, how to do the cluster stitch, and I might even show how to work this um, section in here to do the thumb. I'm not sure if that's even necessary, but I'll probably do a couple of quick tutorials on YouTube for you as well. I hope you really like Rennie's Mitts. And again, use that coupon code, you guys. 20% off, use the code subscriber to get that. So I was working in our office and we have two desks with computers in there and my husband happened to be home one day and we were both in there. I was working on um, a new color, a new uh, color work chart. I use the program Stitch Mastery to do that and it's been a little bit of a learning curve but I'm getting there and I used that program to do Rennie's mitts and I was just playing around with another pattern that I've had in my mind for a long time. My husband pipes up and says you should do, um, I would love a bonsai hat. My husband is a he really loves bonsai. I think I've shown you some of his bonsai in the past. Maybe I'll do a quick tour of his plants this year, but he's really into bonsai. He loves to come home from work and uh, visit his little plants outside, trim them up. He does wiring. He could be out there for two hours just kind of trimming away at his bonsai plants. And I told him, well, if you make me a chart, well, I take that back. First I said, okay, and I tried to make a bonsai chart. No. So I said, well, if you make me a bonsai chart. So he said, sure. So he sat down on Stitch Mastery and whipped out like four charts of different style bonsai for me to use in a hat. So I grabbed some yarn and I made a hat. Now I'm not happy with the colors, but check out these bonsai that my hubby charted out. I'll just kind of turn the hat so you can see, <laughs> pretty cool, I love this one. 
pretty cool. This is just kind of the prototype. I'm probably gonna unravel this hat, and um, he wants it in a darker color. He'd love to have the pot be kind of a blue color or a red color and then a darker green for the bonsai plants. But um, I think it's pretty cool. So I might just um, chart this out and put that pattern up on Ravelry. I think though what would make more sense for him would be some fingerless mitts with these bonsai on the tops of the hands somehow. So oh, I just wanted to share that one with you. I ended up using, I love this yarn. I've said it before. This yarn I got when I was in Napa, and it's wool stock. This stuff is incredible. Wool stock worsted, and um, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's blue sky fibers. They used to be blue sky alpacas. I got their cotton blend once and made a baby blanket out of it, and I love how that turned out. I love this wool. It's just really nice, rustic, but soft. But here's the basic bonsai hat. <laughs> and it'll probably get unraveled. Now that I've shown it to you, I'm going to end up making a longer brim. And I think what we're gonna do is make this one a little shorter. There's a lot of long floats in this hat. If I flip it around, there's just a lot of long floats. So that'll take away some of the long floats, but you know, it's not bunching up. I'm really happy with how I um, caught the floats and I really think that for a hat catching the floats as infrequent as possible is the best thing if you catch it every five stitches or whatever I at least for me it tends to make it pucker a little so there are some spaces where I'm catching it maybe every eight or nine stitches I thought about putting some little mo motifs in between but I think I kind of like just the hat uh, just the actual bonsai themselves Anyway, so there you go, the bonsai hat. So a few weeks ago, I got a Ravelry message from Marta from Mad Fuzzy Yarns. And she asked if I would be interested in receiving a skein or two of her yarn. And what makes her yarn unique is that her yarn, um, the base itself, she's been searching for a base that does not contain nylon, but would work well in socks. And if you think about it, we've only had nylon for I don't know, when was it developed? In the 50s, 40s, 60s? I didn't look it up. But we haven't always had nylon in our socks, people. Although we did have to do a lot of darning. I'm sure a lot more darning than you have to do now with nylon. But I was interested in that too. I'm always looking for a base that doesn't contain nylon just, just to see, you know, there's just so many different sheep breeds. And Marta has done the work. She has looked for different sheep breeds that would work for a base for sock yarn. So she wrote that she um, chose to create wool yarn that is sourced from local Maine sheep. She's from Maine. I travel to area farms to purchase and skirt fleeces by hand and have the fleeces spun to my specifications. I drive the skirted fleeces to Ashland, Maine, which is a six hour round trip to a one man operated mini mill. I select sheep for the quality of their fleece, although most are raised for milk and or meat. Because most farmers don't have the resources to process their own fiber, I am able to rescue fleeces from their compost piles. Oh, the thought of that. I hope someday to own my own mini mill and provide bases for many independent dyers around the world. That's a story for another day, she says. That is awesome. I love to support people who are working and actually doing something in the industry to keep these breeds alive and, and keep these people in business, these farmers in business, and keep the fleeces from heading on the compost pile. Ugh. She says then, once she picks up her finished yarn from the mill, I am, I am ready to begin dyeing. I skein every hank by hand from large cones and then reskein after dyeing to ensure nothing has fallen out of place in the dye pots. I choose to use a variety of dyeing techniques that produce dimensional and exciting colors that are current with knitting trends. So what sheep breed did she choose, you ask? She uses the East Frisian, which is traditionally a milk sheep to produce her fingering weight yarn and a sock yarn with 20% Firestar nylon added. 
Yes, the fire star makes it sparkle and she loves the sparkle. East Frisian wool has a very long staple length, but it is not the softest of fiber. It wears like iron, doesn't pill or shrink, and is perfect for socks. She said also, uh, I also source a BFL cross from New Beat Farm in Knox, Maine. It is plump, soft, and ready to be knit into a sweater or shawl. It's hard to imagine that the farmers threw away their entire first year shearing, unaware of the value of this exceptional fleece. My experience with farms like New Beat has me scouting for amazing fire, fiber not being utilized. I am constantly looking for new sheep breeds and fiber sources to turn into incredible yarns that are 100% main sourced. How cool. I love this. This is her card. It's mad fuzzy, raised, milled, and hand dyed in Maine. Her name is Marta, and she sent me I've already spun this up. This is a skein of the Frisian sheep. And of course, I had to go to my fleece and fiber source book and take a look at what the ladies had to say about East Frisian. The East Frisian is a German dairy sheep that's sometimes referred to as the Holstein of the sheep world after the large and high producing black and white dairy cows. Because of the breed's extremely high milk production, there are actually several types of Frisians from the area where Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands come together. The German type was recognized as the East Frisian breed in 1936 and was imported into Canada in 1992. The breed made its way from Canada to the U.S. in 93 for sheep dairying. Not surprisingly, with the emphasis on dairy production, this breed's wool is an afterthought, which leads to a broad array of descriptive ranges for its fiber. It may be as fine as 26 microns, but for the most part it is coarser. Whether you'll want to use your East Frisian fiber to make everyday clothing, blankets, rugs, or heavy duty pillows or bags will depend on the grade that's in your hands. And here is a picture of the East Frisian. <laughs> so what she sent to me is this skein right here. It's a blue and a kind of a chartreuse green with some forest green, lots of depth. And I, when I got it, I admit it's really, um, it's coarse, but it, you know, when I, it's not itchy. When I put it up to my neck, it, there's maybe just a little bit of itch. I, I don't think I would probably make a scarf out of this, but for socks, why not? So I ended up putting it, putting uh, half a skein through my knitting machine and getting this sock out of it. Look at the cool stripe. Now I wanted to feel what it felt like to hand knit as well, so I ended up hand knitting the heels and the toes, and it was a lovely yarn to work with. This is a, I'd say it's a light fingering weight yarn, and when I blocked it, when I put it in the water and with a little bit of soak in it, it got a lot softer. My husband has put this on, and he says it feels great. He doesn't think it feels itchy. He says it feels like a hardy, hard-wearing sock. Um, I can see him wearing this in work boots or hiking boots, that kind of thing for sure, but I'm sure he'll wear them with his clogs at work too. So we will be testing this out. We'll see how it wears, but I have a feeling it is going to wear really, really well. And like I said, when it was washed, it did get a lot softer. So I would give this definitely a thumbs up for someone who just wants to knit hard wearing socks. I'd say it's very comparable to Regia, maybe just a little bit, um, a little bit coarser than a Regia, but um, certainly not a fleece that we should throw away. If we can save this fleece and use it for sock yarn, I, I say let's go for it. The other yarn that she sent me that I have not knit up with, oh, I love the color. Look at the colors. This is beautifully dyed. This is actually um, Old World, World DK, and it's 100% BFL cross. So there's 270 yards in this 100 gram skein. I think I'm gonna wait, uh, make heavy duty uh, socks out of this as well. Look at that color, ooh, love it. So thank you so much, Marta. Guys, take a look at her site. I will put a link in the show notes to her yarns. Uh, but what a really cool thing Marta's doing. And it makes me think I should keep my eyes 
open for sheep farmers who are who keep sheep for meat and dairy um, maybe their fleece would be nice for things too so mad fuzzy yarn take a look at them and thank you Marta for sending me such beautiful yarn oh those are my finished objects for the week ring my little Liberty Bell happy finishes everyone hope you've finished something maybe in the last couple of weeks too Feels good to get things out of that uh, whip pile. Okay, so some things that I've been working on. I have been working on my project for the, it's not really a competition, it's a challenge that the Michigan Fiber Festival organization has put forth for this year's uh, Fiber Festival in August. I shared, I think I shared a bit about it maybe an episode or two ago, but basically they've given us a picture and have said, um, using any kind of fiber arts, use this picture as an inspiration to create something that reminds you of Michigan in fall. So the picture to me said, water and floating on water and I thought of canoeing and I thought of the Asable River and as a child we would canoe on the Asable and late in the summer, early fall, what it felt like to be floating. So I'm calling my mittens, my color work mittens that I'm making the final float, or I'm calling it fall float. I'm calling them fall float. So I knit the first mitten out with the, um, I knit it up with the pattern that I had um, created and I found that well first of all let me tell you the yarn that I'm using I'm using this really beautiful skein from Shirsty Cat it's a actually it's a BFL sock yarn 75% BFL 25% nylon and I thought it captured the the um, colors in the picture of the water and uh, of the kayak that was shown in the picture and then I'm also using along with it this really pretty russet reddish orange color that I bought at YarnCon a few years ago ago called it's from a company I think they're called Highway 50 Knitting Coast to Coast Yarn Days this is called Chesapeake I don't know what the name is there's a lot of names on this card but this is what it is it's uh, Targi and Nylon 9010 beautiful tonal color there so these combined together <clears throat> Okay, so here is the the bottom of the hand. And what I've done here, let me kind of tell you about the mitten. So the cast on is a garter stitch cast on, and then I've started this lacy pattern, which to me signifies the current of the water with the bubbles. And then here are the fish swimming in the current. So you're in your canoe and you see down below fish kind of, well, hopefully you see some fish uh, and then the blues and the browns represent the water and the bottom of the um, of the river. And then I put a fish on the thumb. And then on the back of the thumb, I'm putting the date. So this year it's 2019. And the other thumb, I'm going to say Michigan Fiber Festival, MFF, which people in posterity, in future generations might be like, who is this person with the initials MF MFF? But I'm gonna do that anyway. And then I thought on the top of the mitten, it would be what, what you see on the top of the water, and that would be floating leaves. Now, it's kind of coming out okay, but in person, it's just really hard to see. So I've changed the top of my mitten completely, and I guess I can show you what I'm working on next for that. I thought it'd be fun to do some canoe paddles and just some various things that you see when you're canoeing. Just some twigs from pine trees and some leaves floating. I love these dragonflies and these birds. So that's what I'm going to try and knit up on the second one. I've gotten this far. <laughs> that's all I've gotten so far on that one. But I'm just trying it out and seeing how it works. The yarn itself is not a yarn that's the best for color work, I have to admit. Um, it's not a yarn I think that's really gonna bloom and fill in the holes, but I really like the colors and um, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. And I'm kind of going for that ethereal 
water below kind of thing, water above, leaves, that kind of, you know what I'm saying. So I think that's all I really just wanted to kind of share with you where I'm at with those. Are any of you out there, I know I have a lot of Michigan watchers, are any of you doing the challenge? And if so, I'd love to know what you're working on if you want to share. Okay, the other big thing that I started, and this thing is going to last forever, it is a huge, huge piece, and it's my stitching. A Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler. I'm going to insert a picture or maybe even a video here of it. Here's what a Savior Praise will look like. This is a really big, big project. What I love about it is the border. It's different all around and it's got the fruits of the spirit, which I think is pretty cool. All the way around, I cannot wait to stitch that ship. And I, I love the sayings in it and the, the hymn. Now thank we all our God. I love that hymn. I thought that'd be fun to stitch those birds. Look how big my hands look. Good grief. Those birds and that house is really cute. I really liked it. So here is how much I got done. This is just the upper left hand corner. I'll be working. Um, I think what I'm going to do is do the border first. I'm using all the call for threads. This is a 36 count linen and I am stitching two over two. Yes, two over two. And my thread piles down there. There's a lot, a lot of different threads. So this is a very big project. <laughs> and one I don't think I'll get done with uh, in the next year. I bet it'll take me even longer than that. But I'm excited, it's beautiful. That one is gonna take forever but I really am excited to do it. And I'm excited for the finished project, or finished product, I should say. Okay, let's talk Knit Crate. I know some of you like to see the Knit Crate kind of in person on the video. This is this month's membership crate. This is really an upscale sock yarn. You get one skein in the membership crate this month, but you also get um, a few other little doodads in the box. I won't say what they are, but they're really cool. This is gorgeous as usual. This is a merino nylon cashmere, 439 yards. It's nice, you guys, super pretty. And since it is more of an upscale yarn, you get one skein this month, but they say that this is the last month of the one skeiners. Um, and then for the sock membership, I especially love this one. And I would actually use this one for, um, this is a sport weight sock actually for the sock membership. I am considering going online. You can actually get on a discount if you are part of Knit Crate, Knit Crate and get their memberships. You can get these discounted right now. I think it's a double down. They call it double down where you get 25% off and then you get another 25% off. So you get half off and you can buy the skeins in like batches of five. So if there's a particular colorway you wanted to make a sweater or something in, you can do that for pretty inexpensively. So this is called Strawberries. It's 100% superwash merino. It's beautiful. And I think I'm going to go ahead and order another skein so I can do a really big project or a bigger project with it. I love the tonal qualities of it. And this is just a good color for summer. Beautiful, beautiful. Next month in June, they do have the video up. So if you're interested in getting a sneak peek, their theme is Calico and their artisan crates. Actually, they have a pop-up shop now. So their artisan pop-up shop, they have 33 colorways of the particular yarn. So cool knit crate. I love the stuff that you do and I love, love, love getting these knit crates. Thank you so much for sending them to me and um, do use my code if you have not ever gotten a knit crate before, 20% off Treehouse20, I think it's the code, but it's down below as well. So some other things that are coming up and other things online that I think you might be interested in. I will be teaching a learn to knit as well as doing some demos at the Plucky Pop-Up event coming up May 31st and June 1st in Hastings, Michigan. So check that out. I will have information in my show notes for that. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. I put my name in for the Wool and Honey event happening in July where they are hosting Plucky Knitter and the Grocery Girls. And I put my name in the lottery and they called me the next day. I got a seat in the um, breakfast 
brunch that's happening on that Sunday. I guess there's 35 of us with the grocery girls and Plucky Knitter and the ladies from Wool and Honey, and I cannot wait. That is gonna be so fun. I haven't decided if I'm gonna be up there or not um, for the night. I may just drive up from Grand Rapids. It's just a two hour drive. It's worth waking up early to get there. So I'm so excited and, and I'll try and take you there along with me if I can. Also, um, do you guys know about the Livestock Conservancy's Shave Them to Save Them program? Go on their website, Starwood Knitter on Instagram. I don't know if she's watching this uh, episode, but she has, she has inspired me. She is doing this. And what it is, um, is if you go to the Livestock Conservancy and click on their Shave Them to Save Them program, I think it's $15 and what that gets you, all that money goes to the, you know, their, their um, program. But what you get is a passport. So fiber artists buy wool from rare breed fiber providers and then get a stamp in their passport. They earn items for completing projects. Then they share pictures of their projects on Facebook and Ravelry. The more breeds they use, the more stamps they collect, and the more items they earn, the more wool the providers sell. So it's a really cool program to get the word out on these rare breeds that, um, that are um, trying to, they're trying to protect and keep their endangered breeds. The Livestock Conservancy has long said that the way to save endangered breeds of livestock is to give them a job. In the case of wool sheep, we need to start using their wool again. Because of marketing challenges, some shepherds discard or compost the wool after their annual shearing rather than cleaning it and selling it. So talked about that with the Frisian sheep and Martha or Marta and her um, mad fuzzy yarn. In addition to encouraging fiber artists to try using rare wools, the program also educates shepherds about how to prepare their wool for sale and how to reach customers and fiber artists, thereby making it more profitable to raise heritage breeds. So check them out. I will have a link below and um, consider being part of that and getting the passport check out to their Facebook site. You can see what people are already making like Starwood Knitter on Instagram. Okay, so I think that is it for this week. Consider joining in on the Summer Mitten Cal with Denise and I again. It's our second annual and uh, show notes can be found down below. There'd be a link to my website for anything I've talked about today. I hope you all have a great Memorial Day weekend here in the United States or just a regular old beginning of summer for us. I guess it'd be the beginning of winter for you in the Southern Hemisphere. I appreciate all of you who come and watch my episodes every week. I One of the main things that drives me to continue to do this because it can be a little tedious and there are times when it's like, oh, I'd rather be knitting than putting together a podcast. But what really motivates me are your comments below. Thank you so much for engaging with me, asking questions, uh, sharing what you're working on. I'm gonna throw out a question for you. So summer is coming. Are there other fiber arts that you like to do in the summer? If so, what are they or what do you plan on working on this summer? Share with me your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you have a great, great week. I hope that you have time to do the things that bring you the most joy, and we will see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye!